Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the farmer. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already pruned clean. Actually, I, I like that translation, pruned clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. As the branch can't bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If a man doesn't remain in me, he is thrown out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you will ask whatever you desire, and it will be done for you. In this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so you will be my disciples. Even as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have spoken these things to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant doesn't know what his Lord does. But I have called you friends, for everything that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. I command these things to you that you may love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own, but because you are not of the world, since I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they would also keep yours, but they will do all these things to you for my name's sake because they don't know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have had sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I hadn't done among them the works which no one else did, they wouldn't have had sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened so that the word may be fulfilled, which was written in their law. They hated me without cause. When the counselor has come, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. You also will testify. You will also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus, just, you know, these are Jesus' last words before the cross. You know, before he dies, before he is abandoned, before he takes our sin and judgment upon himself. And it's amazing, isn't it, how comforting they are. Imagine going to someone at their deathbed. And, you know, imagine wanting to comfort them, to console them, to reassure them. But in the end, they encourage you. They, they, they remind you how important it is that you love them, but that you love one another. And that here Jesus says, you remain in his love. 
And you see this idea of remaining and remaining in his love again and again, especially when he's about to be gone, about to be killed. We saw it yesterday. And we, if you look back to yesterday's episode, you see the idea of remain is the idea of relationship. It's not just remaining in a particular space, staying in the same place or in the same, you know, it, it's, it's remaining in that relationship with someone, like almost like long distance, even when you can't really see them. And here Jesus starts out by talking about why it's so important that they remain in him. Jesus says, I am the true vine. My father is the farmer. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he cuts. You know, but if he bears fruits, he croons that it may be bear more fruit. So, and it goes on to talk about, you know, those that don't bear fruit, you know, they are cut off and then they are thrown into the fire. If a man doesn't remain in me, verse 6, he is thrown out as a branch gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. That's terrifying. And so imagine God as a gardener, Jesus as this vine, and then as the branches grow, as they remain in Him, they are connected to Jesus, that life, they're able to bear fruit. And if they're not, God cuts them, they are thrown away into the fire. A picture of judgment, a picture of lifelessness, of being separated from Jesus. But more importantly, for those who are connected to Jesus, what should we expect? Verse 2, God prunes you so that you will bear more fruit. And here then is the essence of remaining. It's not just remaining so that you have life. That's the thing. You see, many people think, oh, I need to remain in Jesus so that I will still be safe, so that I'll still be happy. But no, the reason why Jesus says again and again here, remain in, in me, remain, 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 is precisely because remaining in Jesus, it's going to be tough. Do you get that? Do you get that? You're not remaining so that you'll be easier. You're remaining as things get tougher and tougher. And this toughness, these trials, they don't just come from the world. They come from God who prunes us so that we will become more fruitful, so that we will become more and more like Jesus. You see, and that's kind of like the thread running through. And maybe now as a Christian, you know, you are faithful. You are holding on to Jesus. And you're wondering, why is it that, I, that I'm having it so tough? You know, why is it so difficult? It's because God is making you more fruitful. And by more fruitful, he's not talking about more dependent, more obedient. He talks about obeying his commands and remaining in his word, just making you more like Jesus. And so Jesus says, don't be surprised, but know that God will even use these trials, use these difficulties to make you more like him, to bear fruit in him. So that's the essence of this remaining Christians, we remain in Christ, not just because of the perks, not just because it's safe, but precisely because when it gets tough, you know, when it becomes just so difficult, you know, we know that God is using these difficulties and these trials for our good and for His glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You that You prepare us for every circumstance of joy to recognize your hand of grace, for every situation of difficulty and trial to recognize your pruning for our good and for your glory. Help us to remain in your love, to remain in your word, and to remain in your Son, Jesus Christ, that all glory may go to him, that on the last day as we look upon the one whom we have pierced, we will mourn and we will be filled with this spirit of contrition and of mourning and of repentance and therefore we will be cleansed and we will be raised up as sons and daughters of God. We thank you that this is the promise of Christmas. Jesus came into our darkness. Jesus took on our weakness and ultimately Jesus took our pain, our sin and our judgment that we might be free and that we might be made whole again. We thank you and praise you in his name. Amen.
Happy Christmas or Merry Christmas <laughs> and see you tomorrow. Bye.